So slide two is saying find a solution to this equation. Y equals X plus two. And I just want to remind all that um, when we have an X and a Y, an equation that's a linear equation like this, there are going to be points on the line that the line um, graphs on our, when we graph that Y equals MX plus B line. To make this true, whatever I put in for X, let's say I put in three, it's going to tell me what my y is. If I put in three for x, I'm going to get a five for my y. If I put in a seven for my x, I'm going to get what? A nine. So as I'm looking at your um, numbers on slide two, I'm sorry, I'm look, I keep looking at slide two, but I mean slide three. Um, we're looking to see if the ordered pair that you put in for slide one works. Is it correct? There we go, I had to refresh to be able to see. And what I'm noticing as I go down through, I'm seeing um, Ben has zero two, Francis has one three, Erish has six eight. All of them, whatever you put in the X, your Y was two more because that was the equation we were working with where X plus two equals Y. So we move to slide three, is your equation on the line? Well, I'll be honest, and I, I snapshotted this slide out of this because when I opened this, I expected to see my equation on this line, but you have to go find it. So let's just take a few examples of peoples that we see. Here's Travis's, and I think Ben did the same. Zero comma two. My first example was three comma five, which is here. Seven comma nine. Oops, that's not on here, is it? Because the nine is too big for this graph. So if you were pausing on slide three, hoping your dot would show up on the graph, uh, whoever created this does most didn't program it to make it show up. So let's move on to slide four. Slide four is asking, what does solution mean? And this is a pretty key question as we're dealing with um, X, Y pairs and lines in the form of Y equals MX plus B. What we're looking to figure out here is what does it mean for a point to be a solution to a linear equation? 
For example, if I say two comma five is a solution to the equation, y equals two x plus three, how could you check my claim to see if that's true? So I'm gonna just give you all a few minutes. There's multiple ways to uh, answer this. And I just like to see what you all can come up with on your own. So let's take about three minutes of quiet time and let people uh, put the, your thoughts into this box. And we'll come back together in just a few minutes. All right. I want to just point out that there's some really great thinking happening here. And I also recognize that some people aren't really sure how to answer this question. So I want you to see some of the thinking of your classmates. And then I'm gonna show you what that looks like um, when I switch screens and I can write again. <clears throat> so for a point to be a solution, remember that's the question we're trying to answer is what is a solution to an equation? For a point to be a solution, you would have to be able to substitute the xy pairs of the xy in the equation. So we'll come back to that thought when I'm showing examples, but that is a true statement. Uh, you could plot the line and then the coordinate and see if the dot is on the line. So we could, in the first example, use the equation. In the second example, your classmate is saying we could use a graph to find out. Uh, the third example, whatever x is, y would be three more of that, two comma five. So we would have to multiply the two in the two x and replace the x to a one and add three. So this person is explaining how you would do it with the equation. And then the last one is something that I had not thought of, um, and it didn't come up in third period yesterday either, by doing the slope and seeing if it gets to the point. So basically saying, I know how to graph that line. Can I use rise over run and find out if it gets to that point? All really great ideas. There were some others, but um, trying to make it so we can get the main ideas out there. So using uh, our classmates' thoughts, <coughs> excuse me. Um, let me show you what I, I think those mean, and I'll just read them again while we can look at my um, right on screen. <coughs> Excuse me, little tickle in my throat. So for a point to be a solution, you would have to be able to substitute the xy pairs of the xy in the equation. That was the first example. And then our third example was somebody who tried to explain that with words, what that would look like. Well, here's what it would look like. This is the equation, y is equal to 2x plus 3. This is my x. This is my y. So I'm going to plug those numbers into the equation and see if it's a true equation. 5, because it's the y, is equal to 2 times 2, because 2 is the x, plus 3. Five would be equal then to four plus three. And this turns out to be five is equal to seven. And that's not true. So if I told you that two comma five was a solution to this line, you would test it and say, uh, no, Mrs. Aldous, you're wrong. It's false. It's not true. We also had people who said, well, you could plot the line. Let me get to a piece of graph paper. Let's see if I can do it here. We could plot the line and see if the dot is on the line. Well, what was the equation? It's 2x plus 3 is equal to y, or y equals 2x plus 3. Well, I know that 1 to this right here is my y-intercept. I'm going to go up 2 and over 3, up 2 and over 3. And that lets me draw my line. And I want to see if 2, 5 is on the line. 
That's my bad memory. I can't even remember what numbers we're looking at. Well, this is two. And comma five, this is the point, and it is not on the line. So it is not a solution. We do see some other solutions here, though, don't we? This is a solution. And that is five, comma, seven. Did I do that right? One, two, three, four. No, six, comma, seven. So I could go plug those numbers into this equation. Does seven equal two times six? Oops. Plus three. Nope, that doesn't work either. I'm not sure what I'm doing. I'm going to pause there and not kind of go off script here. All right, so let's go back. Uh, we have proven that you can use a graph to show that it doesn't work in this ex example. And we've also used an equation to show that this doesn't work. What that means is that we should be able to also use a graph and an equation or slope uh, to find out if something is true or false. All right, I have just opened us up for slide five. and six, and I'm gonna pause and give you some work think time to go work through those two slides, and then we'll come back together and do some more talking in a moment. I'm gonna bring us back. So first of all, I wanna just show my correction. Uh, when I was graphing this quickly, and this is what happens when you work in front of other people, it's kind of like typing in front of others, how you type words wrong all the time. Uh, when I graph this line, I, uh, I did two over three as my slope. I've just redone this to show uh, the correct one. My slope here is two over one. So my y-intercept is still here at the three and my slope would have been going up two and over one, up two and over one, up two and over one. It still shows that that two comma five isn't on the line. So I just wanted to make that correction to our earlier when I was like, wait, this isn't working. What did I do wrong? I, that's what I did wrong. So on slide five, um, that's or slide six is where we seem to be getting stuck. On slide five, yes, that crossing point right there, I know you can barely see it tinily on my slide, but where we have two lines intersect, that is a solution for both equations. The question on slide six is, is there an ordered pair that is a solution to both of these linear equations? Um, and our class is a little bit split on it. Of the people who were comfortable answering, um, six said yes, and two said no, uh, but the answers aren't real strong. Um, people are like, well, I'm just kind of guessing, or I'm not really sure. Um, but, oh, Prehension, can I share that to, to the whole class that you, what you just put in the chat? Prehension just typed in the chat, I'm saying yes, because there's one positive slope and one negative slope. And, and that's an interesting thought, because basically, if we know we've got a positive line and a negative line, they're going to probably cross somewhere, right? And how does prehension know that there's a positive and a negative? Right here. This is a positive x. This is a negative x. That means we're going to have one slope positive and one slope negative. So let's take these two equations. And one of the ways we can check and see if they work is we can graph them. And I'll try to do a better job of graphing and not make a mistake. Here's my imperfect coordinate plane. My first equation is y equals x plus one. So I'm going to go to the positive one. My slope of x means that it's a positive one over one. 
So we're going to go up one over one, up one over one. There's my first line. My second line is y is equal to negative x plus five. So I'm going to start by graphing the plus five on the y-intercept. And my negative x means that the negative slope is negative one over one. So it's going down by one down, one over, one down, one over. And we can see that they intersect right here. And that point is two, three. So now we know, yes, there is a correct answer to this and it is two comma three. But what if we didn't know that and we were gonna try to use the equations? Well, there's a couple ways we can do this. One way is we could set up a table and try some different values for X and see if we can come up with the same value for Y. I don't have much space here. Let me see if I can redo this. I'm gonna write over the no box. We've got X plus one. And we have negative X plus five. And the question is, if I put the same number in for X, am I gonna get the same output? And I meant to put an X there, not a zero. Uh, so if I make my X zero, my first equation, I get one. We know that's not gonna work over here. If I put in a zero on this side, negative zero plus five is gonna be five. So zero isn't a solution. We know what a solution is because we just graphed it. So I'm going to throw in a two. This would be two plus one equals three. Do this in a different color. If I put a two in on this one, negative two plus five also equals three. That means that two comma three works. And I've used tables to kind of guess and check. I'm throwing some numbers in there and seeing what works. But there's an even better way. It's called substitution. If we're saying here that y equals x plus one, and y equals negative x plus five, then I should be able to put what's in green and blue there opposite each other, and they should equal each other. We call this method substitution. We're saying if both of these are equal to Y, then that means if I put them equal to each other, I should be able to solve for X. And I'll get to the questions in the chat in a second. So the first thing I wanna do is I want to subtract this one because I'm gonna combine like terms. The next thing I'm gonna do is add X to both sides. I get two X equals four. I can divide by two. This equals X equals two. I can then go back to one of the equations and say, if I know what the X is, I can find the Y. And we get the same ordered pair of two comma three. I know that's a ton of information, but I don't, and you don't have to use all of them. But what I did here is I said, look, if both of these equations are equal to Y, then I can put them opposite each other.
and find out what the X is. Once I know what that X is, I can go plug it back into one of the equations and find the Y. The other way we did it is we graphed it and found where on the graph they meet. And then there was the method I erased, which was using tables and doing like a guess and check. Okay. So I know that's a ton of information, but I'm going to unpause and let people go back and look at slide six again now with that info and slide seven and see if you can expand on your thinking. All right, I'm gonna pause your Desmos so we can do a quick talk on slide seven. The question was, if you're trying to decide whether a system of equations has a solution, would you rather have the equations or the graphs? And it looks to me like you're pretty much all saying graphs. <laughs> um, I agree, I'm visual. And just looking at the graph and seeing where it crosses is the easier way to do this, right? Unfortunately, that doesn't always work. So let's take a look at slide eight. I can, I see from your results, you guys are looking right at this point. It is negative one, negative one. That is the, the solution to this system. We can look at the graph. We can see where they cross. And we can say, look, we know that's negative one, comma, negative one. What happens though, when we can't see the solution on the graph? So I'm opening up nine, 10 and 11. And I want you to go think about if you can, how, what just think about what's being asked on 9, 10, 11, and see if you can start to form your thoughts a little tighter around what is a solution. We're at Let's look at the last few slides for this Desmos. The question is, does this system of equations have a solution? And when I look through, I'm seeing lots of yeses. Let's take a look at your reasons why. Um, Selena said, it has a solution, but you can't see it with the graph because the graph is too small and the solution goes off of the graph. And that's true. Erish said something similar. And so did Kenny. Let's take a look at Erish and Kenny. Uh, Erish, it is not shown on the graph, but though it does still does have an intersecting point, meaning there will be a solution. Uh, the line still crosses, but it's off screen. So I just want us to also recognize you're talking about this in language we weren't at the beginning of class. You now know a solution is where the two lines cross. So does this system have a solution? And most people are saying no. And Kenny's reason is the slopes are exactly the same. Myra's reason, the lines are parallel, so the lines will never meet. Lisbeth, the lines won't ever cross each other. And if they're not crossing each other, can we have a solution? That kind of gets to Prehensha's comment in the chat a few screens ago, where we had a positive slope and a negative slope. And she's like, somewhere they're gonna cross because they're positive and negative. All right, this is looking good. I think what we're gonna do now, uh, and it is 1253, we're going to start a second Desmos that's related 
we probably aren't going to finish this Desmos. I, well, I know we aren't today. We may not ever. It's. I just want us. It's a good follow up uh, to what we've been doing. So if you could all click on that link I just put in the chat. All right, so in order for us to capture this line, we're going to put an ordered pair that we know is on the line. I'm gonna go with the obvious one, which is zero comma two. Why is that obvious? Because it's the y-intercept. We can see it right here on the graph. We can also see it right here in the equation. And as long as I hit zap, it's gonna capture that line. There were other possibilities. I'm seeing a few, lots of people did what I did and use the obvious one. All right, let's move on to slide two. You wanna to try to capture both of these lines by entering ordered pairs for points on these lines. This one's not as obvious. Hopefully you still have a little bit of room on your scratch paper. Cause I wanna work on this one together. We know we want this point right here, but we can't tell what it is just by looking at the graph. So what we're gonna want to do is use the equations. And we again have a situation where Y is equal to one thing and Y is also equal to the other thing. That means I can put those two equal to each other and find out what the X value is. So if you could write that down with me, please. I wanna combine my like terms. I never like negatives. So because I see that minus three, I, that's what I'm gonna go for first. I could start with other things. That's gonna leave me with two X plus 10 is equal to three X. I'm still trying to combine like terms. Melee, that makes me happy. And I'm gonna end up with 10 is equal to X. We now know our X term. We need to figure out what our Y is. And we can use this down here to plug it into one of these equations. Y is equal to two times 10 plus seven. Y is equal to 20 plus seven. Y is equal to 27. So that's our answer. I used the equation that I have highlighted in yellow but I wanna show you that I could have used the equation highlighted in green and still found 27. So it doesn't matter which equation you go back to after you found the first part of it, it will work with either one. Slide three of this has us looking at a student who's done some work. Oops, let me switch screens again.
you can see that camera did what I did. He took the two equations and said, since they're both equal to y, I can make them equal to each other and I can find the x. I'd like you to take what you just saw me do and answer the question, how could Cameron find the y value of the point of intersection? How could he find the y? I'm gonna spend the rest of our class just quietly working on my screen. And if you just wanna see some of this work for solving these, you can just watch and then come back and try the work yourself later. I'm gonna start by combining like terms Oops. Again, I'm not going to talk my way through this. I'm just going to do the work. So if you just want to watch, you can. I'm crossing this one out because it's giving me a really weird decimal.
Okay, all, it is 1.10. Uh, I will post this video on Google Classroom for you um, while you're in sixth period. We will answer all sorts of questions about how this class works for high school credit, et cetera, and what you would take next year and everything like that when we're together in person on Tuesday. Bye. 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 Anything else, Magdalene? All right, I'm closing the Zoom. See you guys next week.